Good morning and welcome to worship as we gather together to begin our stewardship focus this Sunday. Our stewardship focus this year is God's gifts to us. And this Sunday we are celebrating our outreach ministries, the gifts God gives us through these ministries. Not only gives us, but gives our community. A stewardship letter and your stewardship card will be coming in the mail shortly to you and invite you to begin prayerfully considering how God is calling you to continue to support the ministries of this church in 2025. I am Reverend Corrine Boroff. It's always an honor to be with you. And today we have in leading our worship service, our participants from the outreach ministries. Susan Selby, our outreach coordinator, Joe Snyder, Joanne Colson, Linda Verholz, and Bill Brown. Our music will be by our talented Sanctuary Choir, and this morning the choir is directed by Chris Taylor, and on the piano is Rachel Lashbrook. We thank them for their sharing their music with us this morning. I invite you to keep Susan Finger in your prayers. She is hospitalized and will be for a few days with diverticulitis. So please keep her in your prayers and appreciate, I appreciate very much our music program that just continues to step in in her absence. After the worship service, there are outreach displays in the narthex or the lobby. Please, as you grab a cup of coffee or tea and a snack, uh, just please go to each of those tables. They'll actually have laid out what, if they distribute any items, they'll lay out what they distribute, explain those to you. You will see some uh, communications, especially from the buddy bags. I believe they have letters from children on how much they appreciate uh, what is being offered. So be sure to just stop by those. Members, uh, representatives from each of those ministries will be at those tables to answer any questions that you may have. Also on the TV in the narthex are pictures of these ministries and it's on a loop so it will continue to be displayed throughout the morning. Also in the narthex this morning we have our resident author, Dwayne Landwehr, is offering his fifth book for sale, as well as any of his others. He's willing to sign those, and his uh, return to the church for an opportunity to sell his book is he is giving a double tithe back to family ministry. So please stop by if you enjoy a great read. Be sure to check out Dwayne's uh, table as well. The Welcome Center has many, many opportunities and items there for you to just check out. Your bulletin includes many announcements, so please look through those. Those include at the Welcome Center and at the back of the sanctuary, you will find our welcome booklet. If you haven't taken one of those, take one. If you have taken one and looked through it, be sure to share it with someone else so that they may know what we do here. And it's all the different and variety of ministries that take place here. Uh, we are a busy place joining God in the work of this church and community. Also, the Caring Hearts concert there is a poster back there that looks like this on the Welcome Center. It gives a great deal of details. The concert is Sunday the 29th at 6 p.m. here in the sanctuary. It is an ecumenical concert. There are four churches involved. They're listed on the flyer. There's also some extra flyers that you can take with you so you can invite friends and neighbors and uh, co-workers, but you may take a flyer with you there at the back of the sanctuary. 
So please do that this morning and share this opportunity with others. As our pathway, I invite you for a question. Why do we do what we do at this church? Because we are living our faith, nurturing families, serving our communities. Let us stand and greet one another with the joy of knowing Jesus Christ. As we return to our seats, let us center our hearts for worship.
Please stand as you are able for the call to worship in our first hymn. Enter with the password. Thank you. Make yourselves at home talking praise. Thank God. Worship God. For God is sheer beauty. All generous in love, loyal always and ever. Good morning. I'd like to share some letters from some of the staff at Anderson Elementary School about our buddy bag program. First of all, this is from Mark Hudson, the principal. He said, on behalf of Anderson Elementary School, I am writing to extend our heartfelt gratitude for the incredible support and generosity you have shown our students through the snack bag program. Your thoughtfulness in providing these nutritious and comforting snacks does more than just fill a stomach. It offers a sense of care and community that is deeply appreciated. Many of our families are facing challenging circumstances and your program has become a beacon of hope and stability for them. 
The smiles on our students' faces when they receive their snack bag speaks volumes about the impact of your kindness. It's a reminder that someone cares, that they are valued, and that their well-being matters to our community. Please extend our gratitude to everyone in your group who contributes to this wonderful initiative. The second letter is from Abigail Swickert, and she is the social worker at Anderson Elementary. The impact of buddy bags goes beyond just meeting basic needs. They bring comfort and security to our students, knowing that they have nourishing food available for them. For many of our families, this assistance makes a world of difference, especially during challenging times. As a school social worker, I have seen the transformative power of having a basic need met within the family unit. The relief parents and caregivers receive helps promote their ability to be a present and loving caregiver to their children, which in turn catapults our students towards lifelong success. Your ongoing dedication to our students' well-being reflects a deep sense of care and compassion, and we are truly grateful for your partnership. Your kindness in making a lasting difference in the lives of our students, their families, and our community. The next letter is from Jenny Morgan. She's a second grade teacher. I am writing to express our deepest gratitude for your generous buddy bags. The support you provide through these bags is nothing short of a blessing for our students, many of whom struggle with food insecurity. As a second grade teacher, I see firsthand the challenges that a majority of our students face, like students coming to school without having had a proper meal at home. Your buddy bags have made an incredible difference for these students. Knowing that they have food for the weekend allows them to come to school on Monday ready to learn. The impact on their focus, energy, overall well-being is truly profound. Thank you for your compassion and generosity. We are so grateful for your partnership in supporting our students' success. And the last letter is from Carrie Barnett, a kindergarten teacher. The buddy bags have been a blessing to so many of our students. The kids get so excited when they see the church come in with their tubs of bags. I have had some students whose parents opt out of the program and they look a little disappointed that they do not get the buddy bag like others. They don't understand why their parents opted out. I think this program is wonderful and I'm so thankful for the willingness to help our students who truly need the extra support. Thank you and I thank the church for the support of this fabulous program, buddy bag program.
Generous God, you are the giver of all good things, and your word makes clear that every good and perfect gift comes from you. We ask that you accept these gifts and use them to your glory, just as you multiply the offering of fish and the loaves that were freely given for others. We pray that you would multiply these, our offering to you, and accomplish with them more than we could ask or imagine. Unto the least of these. At Community Cafe, our quarterly teams have grown in number from five to ten teams, and we await two more for our goal of 12 teams. We have those who deliver, count, organize, and order goods for which we're so thankful for their help. And that's in addition to the ten teams. And then something new has happened at Community Cafe. We now have weekly volunteers. They show up to help on their own initiative, um, at their own will, from three to six every Sunday. And we are thankful for them, and I'd like to give you a little glimpse into their lives and their motivation for helping us. One of our weekly volunteers comes from the community we serve. He has had many misfortunes, starting from his youth. He's battled addictions, but he has led a life of recovery for years now, and he has helped us for years. He comes weekly to serve those who have shared the hardships that he has shared, people that he calls friends. Another of our weekly volunteers is a single young man who resides in the neighborhood, 
started attending our church and immediately started volunteering. And his fervor was just contagious. He is um, such an addition and comes and grills for us every week. Another volunteer comes with their grandmother and assists as they are able weekly and helps in whatever role that is needed. Another volunteer, in his own words, states, I showed up on the wrong week for my church team, but I was greeted with kindness that was followed with the making of some very awesome food, and I also got to, for the first time, hand out food to people in need. It was awesome to see their smiling faces and to know they could go home with a full belly that night. He goes on to say two things keep me coming. First, the awesome people that I know work weekly and the new teams that I get to meet every Sunday. Another factor is knowing that we feed quality food to people in need. We see a large number coming in for a meal. And I know that the community guests enjoy our meals because we keep growing week to week. And lastly, Another volunteer came to us. <clears throat> he resides in the neighborhood, um, has his home here, and he had suffered a tragic loss in his family. And he decided, quote unquote, I could sit and feel sorry for myself and read the Bible, or I could come over here and see the people that you serve weekly and put my faith to work. He has come weekly to serve the less fortunate of our community and praises God for the ability to do so. And we praise God for everyone who volunteers for all of our outreaches. Thank you. Please join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to have the opportunity to build relationships. Each of us have been created for relationship with you and with others. You have placed an inherent desire for community deep within us. May we cultivate a relationship first with you that goes beyond a Sunday service. We recognize that in putting you first, we are able to be a better friend to others. Teach us to know who we are in you and that our identity is found in you alone. May we not fall into the trap of comparison, but instead be rooted and grounded in the love of the Father. Let us not become stubborn, thinking we can do life on our own. Friends, family, and community are built upon depending on one another. We are better together. Let us share our lives, serve one another, care for one another, celebrate one another, fight for one another, improve one another, and experience life together. Jesus, we receive your grace and love to heal the places in our hearts that have become hurt and broken Tear down the walls we have put up thinking that they protect. Teach us to not live guarded lives, but lives upon to risk but uh, put out of trust in you. May we walk in humility, love deeply, and forgive generously. Teach us to listen more, learn from each other, and learn upon one another, and lean upon one another. May we love, honor, and guard the precious friendships and resources you have gifted to us. And now we pray together as you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy hold be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. I hope you can hear me well enough. Okay. I'm here to talk about the Helping Hands Nod Food Pantry, and I'm happy to have been involved with it since October of 2019. Uh, in looking at the records, I found that the first pantry was approximately in August of 2008. And at that time, it was held inside the church. People would come in and receive a number, and then they would wait their turn and choose the items that they were particularly needing that time. And it went that way until COVID happened. And as so many places, the church was affected by that also. Uh, the church was closed from my March 25th of 2020 until July 8th, 2020. It did close two other times, and but we have changed our way of uh, delivering goods to, goods to the people by having a drive-through pantry. And that is just once a month. It's always on the second Wednesday of the month. And as of um, May of this year, we changed our hours to 9 to 11, so we would coincide with the hours from the utility assistance company. Uh, outreach program. <laughs> it seems like it's a company. Uh, <clears throat> we provide personal hygiene and cleaning items each month. The items rotate every other month so we can help our guests have uh, a larger range of products. And you will see the items that we give each month in the voice, and they are mentioned uh, also on the first um, Thursday e-news. The number of our guests has continued to increase each year. Uh, I wrote down an average for each month since 2021, and that year it was 54 guests per month. In 2022, the average was 67, in 2023, the average was 80, and the last six months, our average was 96. And part of the increase in our uh, attendance is due to the utility assistance. Uh, you might sometimes see a large line of people waiting outside the door for the utility assistance to open. And the utility assistance is kind enough to ask the people to stop by our Helping Hands Pantry, and that way we're able to serve more people. And a lot of the people that we serve from the utility assistance are new to us, so we always make sure that we tell them when the next pantry is, and uh, we would be happy to see them come again, and some of them do come again. And <clears throat> the, uh, let's see, the, Guests that attend, most of them are regular attendees, and some uh, of them have been coming for long before I came. And we know their names and they know ours, and they, uh, they are very grateful to have the items that we give to them. And we have some guests that are no longer able to attend, but they are able to have the person uh, write a letter giving someone else authority to get supplies for them. And uh, we do have several people that do that. And that, that's a blessing to be able to help people that way. Uh, they, uh, we also have an Aspire caseworker. And he is uh, responsible for quite a few people. And because we're only open for two hours, we have helped him help his clients by letting him pick up uh, bags each month. So I will call him to make sure what he needs for men and for women. And so then he will come and pick up the bags and it would be much easier for him to do it that way than to go to each person's house, bring them their bags, go back home, go to another person's house, and that, so we're happy to assist Paul with so many people. Yeah. 
<clears throat> and um, I have to say that without the help of the congregation, we would not be able to help as many people as we do. Our congregation is so generous with their donations, and it's, it's always uh, encouraging to open our bin and see the, the bounty that is in there. And it really does make a difference to us and to the amount of people that we can serve, and it also helps us keep within our budget. And uh, we are very grateful for the volunteers that help us with our pantry. And uh, we have a new volunteer, uh, Kim Ambler, Karen Ambler, I'm sorry. And uh, Juanita Slattery has been a longtime volunteer. And uh, Christy McCleary helps, and Cheryl uh, Bayer, and my husband Dick helps us. And Juanita's granddaughter, Nancy, will help us sometimes when she's not in school. And uh, we also receive help from the church's staff and the volunteers who are at the front desk. They assist people that come in. So it's, it's such a pleasure to all of us who volunteer to see the look on people's face when they come and receive their bag. And they are always so grateful. And we have had a number of people ask for prayers for a loved one. Um, so we give the information to Pastor Corrine, and she passes it on. And it's good to see that person come back to the pantry again, to know that they're well again. And it's just, I just feel like we're doing something good for our community and to help those who are in need of help. And again, we could not do everything that we do without the help of the congregation and the volunteers and the staff. Thank you all very much. Our New Testament lesson is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We now have this light shining in our hearts but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God, not from ourselves. We are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. And as God's grace reaches more and more people, there will be great thanksgiving, and God will receive more and more glory. This is God's word for God's people today. Thanks be to God. The word of the Lord from Matthew 25, verses 31 through 36. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before him. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Feeding the world, slaking the thirst of the world, welcoming the world, clothing the world, healing the world, visiting the lonely and defending the oppressed. 
How many of these acts have you engaged in this morning? Yesterday? In the past month? Think hard because this is what our Lord commanded us to do. Commanded. And returning to Matthew 25. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? And the king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Now, if you're like me, when you read this, you probably begin to get a little bit out of sorts. What, what should I do? How, how can I accomplish all that the Lord expects of me? To be honest, I cannot imagine myself successfully following this command on my own. In late 2006, Mary and I were searching for a new direction in our church lives. After several church visits, we decided to try Anderson First Methodist Church. We liked what we saw and we liked what we heard. And after a few additional visits, we were excited. Here was an opportunity to be part of a ministry which was actively involved in just the kind of ministries described in this chapter of Matthew. And we've never looked back. This congregation, each of you, has enabled us to do what we would have had difficulty in doing alone. While our attempts to serve have included many efforts, I'd like to focus on just a few areas this morning. Community cafe, helping hands, non-food pantry, buddy bags and utility assistance, which we as a congregation now emphasize. Community Cafe, which we get, began in 2004, or more appropriately, I should say Community Cafe, which began over 100,000 meals ago, was a ministry envisioned by a host of saints and their leaders, Deirdre and Bill Rush. Simply stated, this ministry puts healthy food in hungry people. We've added food giveaways and socialization opportunities along the way, but the true measure of this ministry is in the eyes of the hungry children as they line up to receive their meals. Helping Hands Non-Food Pantry is a very successful 16-year ministry which provides objects to people but in reality provides dignity and meets personal care needs that are in no way met by current government programs such as WIC and food stamps. This pantry gives us an opportunity to meet people's basic needs. If your teeth were dirty and you needed to brush them, if your body was filthy and you needed to wash or shampoo, if you were incontinent and needed an adult diaper, if you had no way to clean yourself after using the toilet, if you needed to wash your dirty dishes or your dirty floors, these are needs that are not met by government programs. They and many other needs are met by our congregation, your helping hands pantry, buddy bags. Remember how you eagerly awaited the school dismissal bill bell on Friday afternoons? The whole weekend was in front of you, cartoons and cereal on Saturday morning, 
soup and sandwiches for lunch, maybe a casserole for dinner. This week, and each school week, many children here in Anderson dread hearing that Friday afternoon bell. For them, it brings the reality of little or no food until breakfast at school on Monday morning. It means not sleeping well during the weekend because their stomachs are empty. And then once their bellies are filled on Monday morning, it means being lulled to sleep during school on Monday and losing one day a week learning. Buddy Bags sends, seeks to send food home with school kids on Friday, food to feed them on the weekend. We're making a difference, but there are so many more students who remain hungry. Finally, the utility assistance program. Somehow, a family gets behind on its gas, electric, water, sewer bill. Maybe it's poor choices. Maybe it's lost employment or huge medical bills that just have to be paid. High prescription prices, having to pay every repair bill or buy a used car to make it to a job. Somehow, a family gets behind and cannot pay their utility bills. They receive a disconnect notice. At this point, they have to show a good faith attempt to pay on their bill or face disconnect. And just a note here, when you're disconnected, in order to get reconnected, you have to put hundreds of dollars down in deposits, dollars that these folks will never have. Our utility assistance program helps folks pay something toward their utility bill, helps to keep the utility on to avoid that disconnect. The amount we pay is based on what you donate on Communion Sunday and in your gifts and contributions during the year. We pay for up to two months each year and usually from $40 to $60 per month. We pay a higher amount or more often, <coughs> pardon me, but we restrict our payments to the amount of contributions received. When you answer our Savior's call to feed the hungry, to give people simple life-changing gifts of toiletries or cleaning supplies, when you help feed children from Friday evening to Monday morning, when you help warm a home during the winter or supply water and sewer services to a home, you answer Jesus' command. Suddenly, by working together all of us here at First Church can accomplish what is so very difficult to do individually. We make a difference in the world for Christ. Currently, we are in our stewardship season. Throughout the next few weeks, we're going to be sharing information about how your gifts are turned into the very face of Christ Think of this as an annual report on how your gifts have made the work of our church possible. How you, we, all of us together have responded to our Lord's command. How we have been good and faithful servants. On behalf of the roughly 136,000 individuals and households who have, through you, experienced our Savior's love. Thank you, and God bless each of you as we move forward into the year 2025. Thank you. We're reminded in Psalm 100 that we enter 
his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. So please participate with me when I ask if you have ever praised God for these ministries, if you ever have ever given thanks for the ministries of this church, if you've ever prayed for the outreach of this church, if you ever have given help hands-on physically, if you have ever financially supported these ministries, would you please stand? This does not happen on our own. It happens because we are a body. Thank you for being the body of Christ. There will be no postlude for us this morning, so following the benediction, you are invited to go out and have your cup of coffee, but be sure to check out the displays of each of the ministries that were mentioned this morning. This is a broad picture of our outreach ministries, but it's only a snapshot. There is so much more that we do as a part of the life of this church that reaches out into our community. So please feel free to just browse and examine. We also still have our book signing that will be taking place. So now receive the words of the benediction today. You have freely received God's gifts to you. And we have heard many of those this morning. Invite you to ask, how am I going to respond to God's gifts? Go with God's blessing. Amen.